everybody. So I hope that you had a good time so far. So now we're going to go to the Guinea National Park. So the Guinea National Park is the uh, only national park in Ch the Chennai surroundings. And it's one of the only, it's the only national park in the country which is situated in the heart of the city. What's interesting with Guinea National Park is the fact that it's primarily composed of tropical dry evergreen forest, which is a very rare type of forest in the country. So we're going to take a particular route, which I really like taking when I go to the national park. I have highlighted the route in red. So we're going to enter the southern entrance known as the snake park entrance as it uh, shares its border with snake park as you, you, I think you can see this yeah, you pointer. Yeah. So we'll enter like this and then travel along this road and take a right at a road known as the doctor's road and then travel through the main artery of the national park, the body road, uh, sorry, the polo ground and then go towards the largest uh, water reservoir in the national park, the Kartankulam tank and return. So in this road, you will have tropical dry evergreen forest, grassland habitat and uh, a pond ecosystem. So as soon as we enter the national park, you would be welcomed with butterflies like the yellow orange dip and the immigrants. So as you see them, they, they're sitting on the ground, right? So this is a process by which they take nutrients from the soil and this is known as mud puddling. So the entrance of the national park, uh, when you enter in around 11 o'clock or like 12 o'clock in the afternoon, you will have around 100 to 150 butterflies carpeting that area. And it's a very beautiful sight to watch. The entrance of the National Park is also known as the uh, best place in, I would say, Chennai to see the large bird reed uh, leaf wobbler and the Indian pitta, two birds which are migratory visitors to Chennai. So as we to go along the doctor's road, you would see there are two main aspects of the road. The left-hand side of the road would be filled with host plants. So host plants refer to the plant in which butterflies lay their eggs on. And the right hand side is uh, carpeted with this type of uh, flower. I'm not very good with flowers, so I'm not sure of the name of the flower. But this uh, particular species of flower is well known to attract butterflies. So in fact, we sit on the bench. I think you can see the bench also in the picture here. So if you sit on the bench and wait for like 20 minutes, you would see all these species around you like for, from the common gull to the blue tiger, the common crow, the forget-me-not, the common mormon, the yellow orange tip, the common jay, and the brown owl. These are all generally seen around uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. That's a very good time to see them uh, taking nectar from plants. And as you see, the yellow orange tip here is uh, having its wings open. So they like to have their wings open and take energy from the sun. And as I mentioned to you earlier, this uh, road is also known as a larval host plant road. So you have a lot of caterpillars like this, the common lime caterpillar. So in some years where migration is successful, we have around 300 to 350 caterpillars on this single road. It's a very beautiful sight to watch. Another very interesting part of this road or this part of the national park is the presence of this moth. I call it the paper moth but uh, it's uh, better known as the gray swallowtail moth. So the gray swallowtail moth is uh, normally seen only in dense evergreen forests, whereas in Chennai, we get it in IIT and at the Guinea National Park. And in the Guinea National Park, we normally see it only on this road. It's best seen after very heavy rains. As we continue towards the main artery of the National Park, that is the Polo Ground Road, you'll start to see that, you know, there are a lot of things to observe apart from just the fauna and flora. This is a really interesting uh, uh, event you get. You see resin dropping from the trees. And mind you, it's frozen in air like right now. So it doesn't ooze and fall on the ground. So you have these vertical shifts which form. And these also known to attract butterflies like the barren and egg flies, which really like this resin because they are they have a lot of compounds which help them in their sexual reproduction. The uh, road is also good for mud puddling as was at the start of the national park. So this is a picture of common lines uh, congregating. And another interesting butterfly which we see around this area is the lime blues. 
so in july 2017 uh, we recorded around uh, 3000 <laughs> of this uh, butterfly just from this one stretch of uh, road so the polo ground road is named after the very famous polo ground which is a small grassland setup kept in the national park so the national park though uh, notified much later was primarily kept as a reserve for hunting black buck so after the national park was declared as a protected reserve black buck uh, feeding grounds were installed in iit the erstwhile iit campus rajbhavan and gini national park so once these areas got cordoned, cordoned off as different different uh, campuses the gini national park was left with this area the polo ground area which is a primarily a uh, grassland area with few termite mounds i'm not sure if you can see but there is a snake on this termite mound so let's go and see if we are lucky enough to get a picture of it so that's a rat snake and that rat snake normally uh, haunts that area and uh, i think uh, there are i can only count the number of times i've been there and not seen it it's a pretty it's a, it's always seen in that spot but i have never been able to photograph it in the past uh, i would say i've been going there for the past 4 5 years it always gets the better of me so it gets me coming back to the national park to at least probably next time take a good picture of it it's a nice lesson to remember that you know not always what you see is what you photograph and not what always you want to see you get to see so the polo ground as i said is mainly maintained for the uh, black buck so the black buck has a very healthy and stable uh, population as of now and which is pretty good as it is uh, as of now it's a uh, it's a population throughout the country is doing well but nevertheless uh, with all the case of all mammals it's very heartening to know that there is a stable population in the city itself the black buck doesn't have any apex predator but the fawns are normally predated by the golden jackal this is a true success story and uh, um it's what's really really happy about this uh, golden jackal's population trend recently is that in most parts of the country golden jackal numbers have been dipping but in chennai alone from iit and union national park the numbers have started to pick up and though there was a small dip due to a couple of uh, main issues which were there now they've started to pick up again it's very heartening to see uh, golden jackals uh, picking up so this is the apex predator along with the jungle cat which has been very rarely seen in the gini national park in recent years if you are a very observant person you might have come across these animals also along your walk from the stick insect which is uh, something we always try to spot in the national park the hammer headed worm which is more common after rains spider hunter wasps which are very common in the national park and if you are really lucky like uh, i was once you might even see them in action trying to catch a spider a uh, lot of uh, moths are present in the national park the stilt moth uh, i think ashwathi spoke about the bark mantis so this is a praying mantis which mimics the stick insect and there are a lot of smaller uh, beetles and grasshoppers and various beautiful species of fungi which are found in the national park now proceeding towards kartankulam which is the major tank and water body of the national park this area is one of the thickest regions of the national park and in this area i normally uh, when i conduct my walks or surveys we all uh, pack our food and there's a small bench there with a table so we sit there and eat our breakfast and uh, we normally reach there around 9 o'clock ish and uh, there we sit and as we eat we try noting what all species of birds we see it's uh, one of the best places to watch birds in the national park with almost 185 species of birds seen the gini national park is one of the most important birding hotspots in the chennai region and in fact i would say in northern tamil nadu after sirdavur and pulikat lake most of the species of birds we get are migratory visitors nonetheless there are a couple of uh, resident species the orange headed ground thrush the booted eagle the dark sided flycatcher the dollar bird and the malayan night heron these are species of birds which are normally seen only in winter 
Whereas the other species, the rose ring parakeet, large cuckoo shrike, yellow footed green pigeon, oriental turtle dove, oriental honey buzzard, and the Indian spot bill duck are resident species. What's interesting to note is that not all the species we get at the Gimli National Park are normally seen in the Chennai area. For example, the dollar bird, which I showed you, this one. So the dollar bird was uh, seen for the first time in the Chennai region. And it's normally a bird of the Western Ghats and Eastern Ghats. So it was very unusual for us to see it in this side. And the National Park also, it, it's, a, it, it's a very, very special place for an, another bird, the Malay Night Hanon, which only comes to IIT and Delhi National Park during very, very heavy rains. The National Park also is a very secretive location for the Oriental Turtle Dove, which is only seen in IIT and Delhi National Park. And very, very rare to find it outside these areas in the Chennai region. In fact, not a lot of people are aware that this bird is a resident in Chennai. And the spot bill duck is a very interesting sighting because normally uh, the Guinea National Park is not associated with large water bodies. And when I show people this picture, they can't associate ducks with Guinea National Park. They immediately go to what Rohit was talking about, Sholengalur and Palikarnai marshland. So, and uh, when you walk in the National Park, you would definitely come across the Oriental honey buzzard and the booted eagle. These two are the most common raptors. In fact, this oriental honey buzzard is being mobbed by a flock of parakeets there. And that's a very co common sight around Kartapulam. There are around 80 rose ring parakeets, which are very territorial of that area. So whenever uh, any large bird of prey, like the honey buzzard or booted eagle take, take flight, these 80 start mobbing the raptor around. So a very common feature of uh, humans is to, after they have finished one set of the walk, is to not be as very mindful and be more of a chalte type attitude and they start returning. You cannot afford to do that in the Guinea National Park because then you might miss one of the most amazing creatures which I normally, for some reason, always seen on the way back. And that's the red velvet mite. This species is almost always seen after rains and after around 9.30. It's a subterranean creature and is pretty rare in our area. And only after heavy rains, after their burrows get filled with water, uh, you start seeing them. And they are very small. And uh, I would say that uh, out of the many visits I made in the National Park, I've only seen it around 10 or 15 times. So it's, when you see a red velvet mite, you know you've had a really great day in the National Park. And with that, I hope you had a great time walking with me in the Guinea National Park. And Hope you'll get to go there soon after quarantine.